Namaste. I'm Sunny B from Nepal, the land of Himalayas, Mount Everest, and birthplace of Buddha. As a martial artist, as an actor and filmmaker, I have been meeting different walks of life and ha have been doing interview. Doing so, I feel great because uh, just listening them, their experience in life get me motivated and make me more stronger. Today, I have a special guest. I have a very special guest. He's not only martial artist, but actor and good human being with big heart. Other than that, he's my good friend, very, very good friend, one and only Mr. Leo Fan, Grandmaster Leo Fan. Welcome to Bebas TV show, my friend. How are you doing? Thank you, Sonny. It's good to be on, on the show. And it's a compliment to me to be honored to be here. It's my honor to be over here and having an interview with you. Uh, today we have an audience, uh, you know, they're waiting for uh, our show. So I would like to ask you, first of all, tell me about yourself, where you born and where you grew up and where are you now? I was born in Weiner, Arkansas. Not, not born in Ar Weiner, Arkansas. I was born in Canton, China. And I came to Weiner, Arkansas at the age of five years old. May the 1st, 1934. I was raised in the Deep South, grew up with racism, picked on, and I learned to fight at seven years old. And that's what's beginning my martial arts career, is when uh, kids picked on me, the first thing they get is smack in the nose. And I got pretty good at it. Wow. And so I became a, <clears throat> from there I became an amateur uh, boxer. I fought in the AAU, Golden Gloves, Intercollegiate, and I had 25 fights in the ring. And, uh, and then when I got to 17, and a half years old, I went to church, I got converted, and I became a United Methodist minister. I served as a minister for 44 years, and I retired in 1994. And uh, also, in addition to being a minister, I was called uh, one day to be a star in a movie in the Philippines, and that started my career uh, in the movies. I did 25 movies, my movie Kill Point was shot over here, and it did uh, the top 10 grossing film that weekend uh, in 27 theaters. And, and, and then from uh, being a, a movie maker, I became uh, a, a, a martial artist in addition to being a boxer. I learned the other arts, uh, of uh, Chinese arts of Kung Fu, and uh, many other things. And, and then I became a writer, and, and Bruce Lee was one that encouraged me. Uh, I, I was not too good at writing. I made the F in English. <laughs> All right. And Before we go that, uh, my friend, you know, you are my best friend mm -hmm. uh, this time. You know, you are my inspiration, everything. We're going to mm -hmm. be uh, asking one by one question, yeah. and it would be easier to understand audience what is all about you and yeah. what you are doing now with Sunny yeah. in Fight of Fury 2 Annihilation. Yeah. Yeah. So I would like to ask you, you know, because now this time the all pandemic, you know, because of this uh, yeah. uh, COVID-19, you know, yeah, yeah, people yeah. are scared, people are uh, infected, a lot of your loved one, my loved one is dying, you know, this is a very sad story, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would like to ask you, what have you been doing during this pandemic time? Well, for me, uh, I take advantage of the isolation. Um, so what I do is four things. I uh, work out, train like a crazy, four hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, yes, I, 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 I'm the witness for that. Every time I, I come over here to see Mr. Leo Fang, you know, he's always doing dumbbell and walking around. Go ahead, go ahead, a little bit elaborate about that. And then number two, I make sure I eat the right food. There's only about 13 or 14 foods I eat daily, but every once in a while I might uh, veer from there and get a hamburger or something. 
but mm-hmm. I don't make a habit of that. And then number three, I keep a positive mental attitude. And number four, I engage with people. But since COVID came, I usually have it, you know, uh, virtual or on the phone. And if they come here, only one or two people, and they have to be masked and keep about 10 feet from me. So I'm very uh, uh, cautious about all this. And so that's what I've been doing. And, and most of all, I write down every exercise I do and everything I do. So I'm coming out a book. I'm coming out a book soon. Uh, uh, the Roadmap to uh, Longevity. And it will in, involve uh, three things. F- nutrition, exercise, mental attitude. The trinity of health. Yep. How many days in a week you train yourself? I train uh, seven days a week. How many hours? Uh, four hours a day. Wow, see, this is your farm. This is my friend. I'm proud of uh, <laughs> being his friend and, uh, you know, our colleague. We do a movie together, Fighter Fury 2 in ILS and now. It's going to be pretty soon coming, maybe September, in my birthday. I'm planning to do the red carpet in Las Vegas and hopefully uh, Leo Fang going to be there. And the second question is, you know, uh, what, what, what kind of martial art you uh, did when you uh, uh, just started? Well, when I started, I, I started, uh, my first martial art was Chole uh, Fat Kung Fu. How, how old were at that time? Oh, I was uh, in my uh, uh, 30, late 30s, early 40s. So you started uh, Charlie Foyt in Hong Kong, or China, or you no, started no, in San Francisco? San Francisco. Under the famous master, Lo Bun. So, but you did before Charlie Foyt, you were already uh, your boxer, right? I was just boxing, that's all I did. You just boxing that time? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you started Charlie Foyt uh, Charlie, after boxing? Yeah, and then uh, I, I was with Charlie for two years. And one of the things I learned from Charlie Foyt, as I go back to it, they are focus on a strong foundation. Mm-hmm. And I, I work, I, use, I integrate that into my, my martial arts. Mm-hmm. And then I went up to uh, another uh, school, a Silum school, and I did fishing one night. Did that was in San Francisco too? In San Francisco. Okay. So I, I go on Friday night to San Francisco, then I, a friend of mine and I would walk up uh, to, um, to the Silum school and say, let's check that out. Uh-huh. And so when I went into the Tony Fudd School, the um, instructor was T.Y. Wong, an old Chinese guy, you know, about 60, 70 years old, sitting on the school, smoking a cigarette. He blowing smoke all over the place. Mm-hmm. So I was not interested in him. I was interested in the guy in that corner. He had, looked like he had a five, 10 pound dumbbell. Okay. And he was doing all the stuff like that doing the form mm-hmm. with the dumbbell. All right. I said, wow. So he turned around and saw me mm-hmm. and walked over to me and he said, Jimmy Lee. That was Bruce Lee. It was Jimmy Lee, okay. Yeah, he said, so he was training there. To the Bruce, was, when the Bruce came first, he, he was uh, with Jimmy Lee, right? He'd house, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, I don't know where he met uh, uh, Bruce, but Jimmy comes over and he said, I'm Jimmy Lee. And so we shake hands and he said, you want to join us? Uh, well, I think about it. I said, I think I... I learned all I can over there, and so maybe I, I want to savor, you know, uh, what you guys do. All he right. said, well, come on over. Mm-hmm. So I trained there for about, um, about eight months. Mm-hmm. Then Jimmy said to me one day, he says, I'm getting out of here. Today is my last day. I, because um, he had, uh, he wrote a book with T.Y. Wong. All right. So he accused of, uh, accused Jimmy of, of stealing $10 from him. Mm-hmm. So Jimmy got mad, uh-huh. and he said, I'm going to start a class in my garage, and you're welcome to come. I said, I'll go with you, Jimmy. Mm-hmm. So I went with Jimmy, and I trained with Jimmy for eight months, and then one day he says, hey, uh, you want to go to Wally J's Luau? See, Wally J was a good jujitsu guy in, uh, you know, from uh, Hawaii. Hawaii, okay. And, I heard about him. But he had island, he had island uh, a judo club, a uh-huh. jujitsu club. So he compete. So he raised money every year. Mm-hmm. So he had a big uh, luau, 
And he said, I said, well, why would I want to go there? I don't usually go there. He said, why do you want to go there? Because it's a young guy, 20 years old, It's going to demonstrate. He's fantastic. All right. His name is Bruce Lee. Mm -hmm. I said, well, I got to see that. You know, 20 years old, I said, well, you got you know. Uh -huh. so, so I went to the Luau and, and Bruce demonstrated. He went through all the forms. He was good. He'd mm -hmm. go, oh, throw his, kick his leg up there and slap it and all that stuff. And, 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 we got, and they, all the Kung Fu guys in the audience was you know, laughing. Mm -hmm. Then he says, how you think you're going to fight with that? Uh-huh. He said, dry land swimming. They all turned red in the face. Oh, yeah? <laughs> he said, well, anybody out there want to come in and stop my jab, my finger jab? But I'm not going to hit you in the eye, I'm going to hit you here. So some big old football player, white guy, uh -huh. jumps on the stage. He said, you ready? The guy said, yeah, pop! Touched him, and the guy didn't even get off the, he didn't even raise his hand up. That's how fast it was. So fast. <laughs> he said, okay, maybe you're not ready. That's, you ready? Let's try again. Boom! Same thing. And then he said, anybody else? Got another couple of guys come up there, same thing. And uh, so he went on to talk about uh, uh, the weakness in classical Kung Fu. All right. He said, it's okay as, as an exercise and dance, but don't go around telling people you're deadly. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so anyway, uh, Jimmy says, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 Bruce is going to stay overnight o over the weekend with me, uh -huh. and you, you're welcome to come. So, so he invited I, to you. Yeah. Okay. So Monday I went there, and he had a small group of people. Okay. I remember Bob Baker was there. Bob Baker was in uh, one mm -hmm. of the movies. Remember, he was a Russian guy uh -huh. uh, in, in, in one of the uh, movies. In the film, it's a Chinese connection. Yeah, Chinese connection. He had that, uh, that suspender like that. But in Asia, we call uh, 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 Fist of Fury, something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Bob Baker mm. uh, was, uh, was one that, you know, usually does his class too. Okay. So anyway, uh, and Jimmy said, oh, uh, Bruce is going to be coming here a few more months, mm -hmm. and that's 1964. So he came, and uh, and and and, Br and, Br uh, and Linda was pregnant with uh, Brandon. Brandon. And so they lived at Jimmy's house. Okay. And then I come in every Friday night, and and so when I saw they were doing this kind of stuff, uh, that only Wing Chun, Wing Chun, or Bai Yeah, stands. yeah. I told him, I said, Bruce, I I I, I don't know why you guys doing that. Uh, I'm not used to it. He said, well, you, you, are you, uh, you left-hand, right-hand? I'm left-hand, but I, I, my right hand is from here. I throw right cross, uh -huh. and I throw hook. I throw jab and a hook, and right, one, two, three. Mm -hmm. And so I, I did that with it real pop, 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 just like this. See, that's my stance then. And you notice he has the same stance after that. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Here, so man. I said, pop, 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 pop. And he said, do what you want to do. So he, Jimmy and I would go upstairs to mm -hmm. Jimmy's uh, living room uh -huh. and we would sit there and uh, talk and Jimmy is a heavy drinker so he has a, oh, he was drunk has a fifth of whiskey in his hand oh, yeah. drinking like Coca-Cola. Okay. <laughs> but he, he don't get drunk. When he does chi so with you or something, you smell, you smell like a, a, a distillery. All right. And, and so that's the story. Mm -hmm. So we would sit there and talk about martial arts and, and, and I talked to Bruce about my boxing experience, mm -hmm. and uh, it turned out later, you know, he told uh, Linda, you know, uh, of the th uh, there are three people that, that basically he had a lot of respect for. Okay. One is Jean LaBelle. Mm -hmm. Number two, Hayward Nishioka, judo guy. Judo guy, judo. And he said, I, I, I like uh, Leo hanging around me. Wow. And no one knows that until after See, when I came out of the woodworks, mm -hmm. everybody thought I was just telling a big story mm -hmm. that I never knew Bruce. Okay. But basically, I, I care less. So was, the, his life, the, when you was in San Francisco, <laughs> like you, Jingle Bell, and the judo guy. Yeah, well, see, where I came in was after the Long John Wayne fight. See, okay. he was doing his, this thing, trying to catch him, and mm -hmm. the guy was swinging, mm -hmm. slashed his uh, with the so fingernail, cut his... Uh, it, his neck. So, sorry to interrupt because that time the Bruce didn't uh, develop the Jeet Kune Do, you know, 
He still he was teaching yeah, the way John. Yeah, Dick yeah. Kendall was born the next day. Oh, the, the, uh, next day, you're so, right. So what he did was he called me. Mm -hmm. and he said, Leo, uh, Jimmy called me. Mm -hmm. He said, Leo, it's coming down. Yeah. Uh, uh, Wong Jama's coming over to the dojo. Yeah. Because they rented a little dojo down in Oakland. Okay. And, and so, so I said, well, when are they coming? They said, they'll be here in half an hour. I said, they'll take me out on half get there. I said, I can't make it. Okay. I said, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But call me afterwards. Mm -hmm. Afterwards, uh, Jimmy called. Mm -hmm. said, uh, hey, Leo, it's over. I said, what happened? He said, you talked to Bruce. So Bruce uh, got on home. He said, that bastard ran from me and scratched my back. I couldn't catch up with him. Good thing he stumbled. Mm -hmm. And I fell on top of him and tried to pound him. Okay. And then he, he, he begged for his life. He said, I give up, give up, don't hit me. I give up, give up all in Chinese. Okay. okay. Yeah, so. <laughs> So yeah, just Ching Chui is a very yeah, sweet yeah. punch. So, you know, so uh, what happened was, you know. So I said to Bruce over the phone, I said, Bruce, mm -hmm. you know what I've done? He said, what? I said, I grabbed him first uh -huh. and pounded and ground him. I said, I would beat him up with uppercuts and hooks. I said, uh, you, you got to immobilize him before you start hitting him. So what exactly. you were doing is trying to hit you, were hitting him in the back of the head. Yep. And he was scratching you as he swing his arm backwards. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so next day, Guess what? I went there and I said, Jimmy, where's Bruce? He said, in the garage. So I opened the door, stood at the top of the, the stairs, mm -hmm. and he had a chain hanging from the, the ceiling uh -huh. and a leather glove. And man, he was Muhammad Ali, bouncing around. Boom, boom, boom. And he was throwing uh, straight punches like that and hooks like that. And you couldn't tell whether it's a straight punch or a hook. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and the people, See, that, that's not how I throw it. But he had his own uh, system. Mm -hmm. And so afterwards, he turned to me and said, Leo, you know what I'm going to call my, uh, my new system? I said, what, Bruce? He said, Jit Kun Do. So that's how Jit Kun Do won. Yeah, I said, what was that? He said, the way of the intercepting fist. All right. And then later he explained to me about the importance of initial move. Mm -hmm. So in other words, Jit Kun Do is to intercept you the moment you blink your eye. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, so that was the birth of JKD in Oakland, mm -hmm. and I was there when it happened. It's true. Right after he met you, and uh, after that, I, according to my knowledge, you know, uh, I, when I was watching a lot of uh, YouTube channel, YouTube videos, uh, he started watching the 8 millimeter boxing Muhammad exactly, Ali's uh, exactly. videos, everything. Yeah. So his, his idol became Muhammad Ali, and he yeah. called me one night and told me, he said, hey, guess who I'm having uh, dinner with? I said, he said, John Tooney, Gene Tooney's son. We, I don't know him. Well, uh, Gene Tooney, you know, Gene Tooney was world uh, heavyweight champion back in the 20s. In boxing? Boxing. Okay, he fought Jack that. Dempsey. Okay, okay, okay. Jack Dempsey knocking everybody out. All right. But Tooney was the one who came and boom, boom, moving, and Dempsey couldn't hit him. Okay, so okay. So he beat him twice. So his son, John, uh -huh. uh, was the son of John Tooney. Mm. So so Bruce sat there at dinner, pumped him for every information he could about his his father's father, Tony. Wow. See what what mm. uh, Bruce liked was, and I told that to Bruce. I said Bruce, every guy that had good footwork and move, a, a flat-footed boxer has problems with. Mm -hmm. And so so what happened was, uh, uh, Gene Tooney was a mover. And then while Muhammad Ali had good footwork, okay. he said, I dance, so I dance. He mixed it up everything. And he said, you can't hit what you can't see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and so, so Bruce started copying him, mm -hmm. and he had those, those eight millimeter film. I, have, I still have them in the garage. So oh, you do have two? <laughs> I have, have some of those too. And, and so, okay. so he had all the, um, the films of, uh, of Ali, and then he would look at it. He, he got an eight millimeter projector. Okay. So he's projecting on the wall. He, he hold it up with a mirror, it looked like he's fighting southpaw. Okay. See why Ali's like this. Uh -huh. And uh, so the right hand uh, is a southpaw, right? Yeah, southpaw is right hand forward. Yeah, forward. And in okay. uh, in the orthodox is this. Orthodox is yeah, like a left, the, right? You notice his in inner dragon. His is like this. That's how I used to fight. Uh, the, uh, Ali used to fight southpaw, or no, orthodox. No, no, he, he's he's an orthodox. No orthodox. Okay. Orthodox like this. Okay, okay. Yeah, but he can shift like this. His, his footwork was yeah, amazing yeah. all the time. He was yeah, keeping That's moving, why Wicked you know. Do is built on, uh, on footwork. Yeah, I want to talk about the end, the end in the weekend, though. Uh, before that, you know, uh, I would like to ask you, the before, because I have heard 
you have done many style uh, you did a lot of fighting and um, uh, street and even though uh, you did the professional fight in boxing no 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 I uh, I fought amateur just you fought amateur boxing a lot almost, you know I almost went uh, professional but uh, when I saw those guys in the gym they were all the punch drunk and huh huh Okay. I said, no, I don't want part of that. But you got a lot of experience in street fight, right? Oh yeah, 15, 16 to the bottom. Yeah, li like I did, you know, in my like a teenage, yeah. you know, I had like a many street fight experience that made me stronger and today I'm here, you know. Yeah. So I want to ask you one thing, this yeah. is a question. Have you ever regretted doing martial art? Have I? Have you ever regretted doing martial art? No, no. I want you to elaborate that one. The reason I happened because I discovered at 93 years old, almost 93, I discovered the spiritual, uh, the spiritual roots of the martial arts. That martial arts uh, was uh, practiced by, in China, by, by uh, you know, the religious groups. You know, and, and uh, usually they are monks. And because uh, my dad used to tell me, he said, uh, uh, the monks would um, uh, sit there in the, in the village at the beginning to beg for food, beg for, for, for money. Uh -huh. And he said he saw what happened. Some punk came in, grabbed his, his bucket, took it, and the monk jumped up from where he was and kicked the hell out of that, uh, that kid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, he said those, those monks, uh, well, some he calls it, uh, they train in the monastery. That's a true story, right? Yeah, true story. Okay. My, my dad, Interesting. Okay. See, my dad was one that mm -hmm. told me all about these things, and my uncle used to take uh, uh, Gong Fu in, in, in China. Okay. So, um, so anyway, my, my dad was uh, very familiar with uh, the monks in the village. He always, you see them all in the village. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're begging. Uh -huh. But they, they're fighters. They train in the, in the monastery. Okay. And uh, so anyway, uh, uh, um, uh, anyway, what was that? I lost my thing of thought. Here. The thing is, uh, have you ever regretted doing martial art? That's no, the no, question. no, no, because today it has a spiritual value. Exactly. It's, it's what... That's it, what I wanted see, to hear. I, I don't know if I send the, the DVD to you they did on me at the Martial Art Museum. Is the uh, spiritual warrior. The Warrior of uh, Peace. Oh, Michael Medi? Yeah, yeah, Peace Warrior. Uh, I don't have that one. Yeah, I'll send it to you. Okay. In fact, uh, they did two. That one and then... Uh, uh, and, and then... Uh, 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 Robert... Um, uh, the guy's radio host, the soul guy. Yeah, yeah. He, okay. uh, I don't remember his last name. He did, <laughs> he did uh, a video on me, a different mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. But there's the one in... Um, uh, in martial art museum, it's pretty good. It's well done. Okay. And it, it showed about uh, uh, a core, uh, a chronicle okay. of my life from, you know, from uh, uh, seven years old till, till now. And 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 for me, it's called Peace Warrior. That's what you call it. Peace it was Warrior. Peace Warrior. And um, and and I have a, a change. I don't. Fight a drop of a hat like, like I used to. Mm -hmm. For instance, a good example was um, I was waiting on this park, this guy backing out okay. at Starbucks in Olassen and uh, in Tabanga. Okay. And as soon as I he backed out, I was going to go in, and zoom, a guy jumped in and took my spot. Mm -hmm. Now, that in the old days would have been the reason for me to get out of that car and just you beat him up with a, a tire iron or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I didn't. I parked another slut side. So I'm walking there and kept looking back like that. Looking back like that. Mm -hmm. So um, I got to the Starbucks. Mm -hmm. And he looked at me and he said, and he, he got his coffee first. Okay. Looked at me and he says, uh, say, did I take your parking space? I said, yes, you did. But that's okay, brother. Okay. okay. Everything's good. And I meant it. I wasn't upset or anything. You calm and relaxed. Yeah, yeah. When he turned to, to move away, he 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 squeezed his coffee too too hard. The the top fell off and spilled all over his gray suit. He had a gray suit on like this. All right. Okay. <laughs> and I'm sure, I don't know if he's a real estate guy or what, okay. but he messed up his whole thing. I, exactly. I, I didn't say nothing. I just I just turned around. Just ignoring. I said to me, 
karma. Like they say, man, no, what you give, what you get, right? Yeah, <laughs> and then the same thing at the, at this Starbucks over here. Mm -hmm. I'm standing there, and the guy kind of pushed me aside and got in front of me. Mm -hmm. And and I said, oh, you must be in a hurry, sir. Be my guest. And my wife saw it, and she said, hey, what an a-hole. I said, oh, no problem. Don't bother me. Uh -huh. See, it's his issue, not mine. Exactly. See, exactly. that's how I look at life today. Yep. But it take a while. So Don't this is all because we are martial artists, yeah, we are yeah. true martial artists. We know how to control yeah. our temper, everything, you know, according to the situation we adopt, right? Yeah, that's what, you remember in Enter the Dragon, this guy was talking about, so, boom, do I bother you? <laughs> oh yeah, in the boat, on the boat. Yeah, said, no. <laughs> so, so anyway, one, one thing left another said, I'll tell you what, Let's go over to the island and we'll, we'll meet. We will so he gets on the do boat. Do our business. <laughs> he, he let the boat go. Uh -huh. and, and so that's basically what Bruce was saying there. He said, you just let it go. Let him, let him uh, destroy himself. So fight him without fighting. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so, uh, so anyway, uh, that's the difference now and then. I, uh, I avoid fights. So being a true martial artist, you know, yeah. we you know, deal sometimes this kind of crap, yeah. but we know how to deal exactly. and overcome. And the only thing... So there's that, no regression, right? No, no. The only time I would would really get aggressive if somebody break in this house and I'm here and I see him. It's a different situation. You, no, know, yeah, you have to yeah. fight. Where you have to fight, you have to fight. Yeah. You know. So, so you know, every once in a while I hear somebody round in the door, I look and I say, well, you know, and I'm good thing you're coming, buddy, because I'm wide awake. <laughs> I'm here, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna give everything, bike, head, body, everything. A, I have a good uh, weapon. Exactly. It's one of those hammers with 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 those prongs on. Okay. So you can do damage, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I know he ain't gonna block okay. those things. So, so anyway, it's good to hear about you know you have a long journey since your childhood to now, and then you being yeah. a martial artist. And you are well-known martial artist. You, you get invited uh, Bruce Lee's uh, uh, Ninja event. You get invited in a martial art history museum in a different uh, award. You know it is like a achievement as a uh, being a true martial artist. Yeah. And you have done all this. You know you have achieved all this. But, but the key to it is it eliminates stress. See, stress will take life out of you. Exactly. See, so as long as you can deal with stress, with relaxation, mm -hmm. what I call relaxation response, and then then you you can one year after another you can live. Exactly. And and, and I, I feel like that. Yep. I don't I don't feel like I'm I'm getting old, although I'm old, but but I, I feel that every day is a new day, and it's to be enjoyed. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, well. Almost coming to end, but now we have still a couple of questions you have to answer because yes, I'm here for today because my movie gonna be coming out pretty soon. Fighter Fury Two. Before that, you know, yeah, I yeah. wanna uh, okay. give this uh, information to audience. Yeah. What is all about you? What is about me? And what is the movie about? That's you a good know. idea. Good so idea. now yeah. we coming to the point from martial artist. At the first, you are human being, become martial artist. Now. How did you get into the show business? How did you get into the film industry? In film this industry. I want to know it, man. Okay, uh, this is what happened. I was at Gopu class, and there's a guy named Rocky. So he was talking to a bunch of guys uh, in in the, uh, in the in the dojo, and and he was telling them he's gonna make this movie called Charlie Chan, Charlie Chan Number Two Son. Okay. So I walked up there and joined the. They had a conversation. I said, Hey, Rocky, I never asked him before or anything. Never thought about it, but it'd be interesting to be in a movie. Mm -hmm. Why don't you put me in your movie? He looked at me like that and he said, What makes you think of that? I said, Well, <laughs> you know, I won't know until you give me a chance. Okay. And he turned around and walked off. So he didn't give you damn? <laughs> no, no. I didn't, I, I didn't forget that. Okay. I was pissed off. Uh -huh. So I said, Okay. So driving home, I was thinking, I said, I got to find out how you get into the movies. So um, someone said, well, you can audition. So I went to an audition. Uh -huh. 
And, and, and the guy says, uh, gave me a script to read. He said, that's enough, that's enough, that's enough, that's enough. He was ran nasty. Okay. And that, that kind of pissed me off. I said, let me tell you something, buddy. One of these days, you're going to beg me for a job, and I'm going to kick your butt out of the dojo, out of the studio. <laughs> and I walked off. <laughs> and then, so I went back and... It was in California, L.A. or something? No, it was like. up in, up in uh, Stockton, and I went to uh, okay. San Francisco okay. for the audition. Okay. But the reason I went there, a friend of mine, who, uh, who was kind of like an agent, mm -hmm. uh, she liked me, and she, she sent me over there. Okay. I wouldn't have gone without her, her, her encouraging me to. So I went there, and, and, um, and he insulted me. That was I said, you know, uh, that guy, I, t I came back, she said, how was the audition? I said, well, I didn't get the part. <laughs> but, but, but I said, I said, that guy was a nasty guy. He's egotistical, nasty. I mean, he wasn't. If I was going to get arrested, uh -huh. I would have popped him in the face uh -huh. and kicked his butt. And, and, and so she said, she laughed. She said, well, you know, these, these, uh, 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 these guys that uh, the interview you are, are not, you know, they're very evil uh, oriented. Uh -huh. and, and I said, well, anyway, forget it. I said, I'm going to find my way. So I started looking around, and, and the first guy told me, he says, well, you got to have money, man, if you want to do a movie. But then, 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 then it's funny, it, see, when, uh, when you're ready, uh, everything falls in place. So I, have a, I was working as a social worker at the time. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so what happened is, uh, 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 my supervisor said, hey, you got to meet Eric. He's, a, he's an introvert. He don't go nowhere. He just sit around and write scripts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I said, uh, well, maybe I can meet him. I said, I'm interested in, in getting off uh, my foot off the ground and, and making a movie. Okay. So what he did was he, uh, he had Eric come to my house. Okay. And he showed me a script. And, uh, you know, that's the first time I've seen it. A shooting script. Never been seen the no, script no. before. So I'm, I'm reading the thing and I'm looking at it. I said, hey, uh, uh, tell me, what do you mean by this, Eric? So he went through the motion to me. Hey, yeah, that's cool, man. Let me have a script. And I'm going to sit down and raise money with you. You so, told him? Yeah. Okay. So uh, anyway, um, a friend of mine it was a minister, okay. a black minister. So he had a, an attorney who was a black guy. Uh-huh. And he said, oh, said, you want to make a movie? I said, I'll take you to my attorney. He's a member of my church, the Jones and I Methodist Church. Mm -hmm. And he said, you give him the script. So I gave him the script. Mm -hmm. Well, he said he's going to take it to Hong Kong and all that. That's when the Hong Kong film industry was growing. And, and the Gung Fu movie was coming here. And the Five Fingers of Death and all that. And that was right after the Bruce died, right? Yeah, it after Bruce all, died. All yeah. that happened after Bruce died. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, that's, this was in 70, mm -hmm. 1974 okay. for me. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so anyway, he went around six or eight months, never heard from him. Uh, he keeps saying, uh, you know, he had never made a commitment. Mm -hmm. so, um, so all of a sudden, five o'clock one morning, mm -hmm. the phone rings and I said, I said, who is this? He said, this is Mayor Kalila. I'm from Coronao, Coronao, Philippines. I'm a filmmaker, okay. Ilocondo Production. And I would like to see if you would be interested in uh, being uh, One of the lead. In, in a movie. Okay. And I said, well, how do you find out about me? He said, I picked up a copy of Black Belt Magazine. I saw your picture okay. in it. That and helps. I want to see if you'd be another Bruce Lee. Okay. And uh, that, that was Jane, uh, that was uh, December 1971 magazine. Mm -hmm. and so you were on cover page? I was on the cover. All right. And then, uh, and then I said, well, if you, if you for sure, send me a plane ticket. He said, we will do that. We'll meet you at the airport. Mm -hmm. Three days later, Pan Am, that's when Pan Am was still flying. Okay. They sent me a ticket and said, sir, you have a ticket from, um, mm -hmm. uh, from uh, San Francisco to uh, Manila. Taipei, from Taipei to Manila. Never. So when they stopped so in Taipei, and I would think it was six hours that I stopped, I got out of Taipei and started looking around and 
and and and, uh, and remember a friend of mine who was a professor at Pacific uh, uh, University of Pacific, uh -huh. and he was teaching school there. And he told me, he said uh, he knows some uh, filmmakers in Taipei. Okay. And and then so I uh, I called him and told him that uh, I stopped in Taipei, and but when on the way back maybe I stopped there. Uh, to to mm -hmm. to meet with his friends and then we'll talk about movies there. Okay. But anyway, I went to Manila. They picked me up in a limousine, mm -hmm. and and it was it was night, night by seven o'clock at mm -hmm. night. They took me straight to this uh, restaurant, mm -hmm. and got there. There were several celebrities sitting there, and they all had a girl sitting up next to them, and my chair was empty, and it was soon. There's a girl coming sit next to me and look at me and smile, hi, how are you? All right. I said, I'm fine. And I got thinking, I said, oh, no. I, I said, I, I, I'm not getting involved with that. My wife will kill me. And, good man. Good man. <laughs> so, so we had dinner and talked uh, about what we're going to do. Uh -huh. So they want to sign me to a two-picture deal. Okay. And I said, well, I got a friend. His name is Ron Martini. He was U.S. number one. Uh, a uh, 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 karate champion uh -huh. in, in the U.S., top ten, and he said, "Well, we'll write in the script it, mm -hmm. that that uh, you and him uh, will, will bust this syndicate in Manila, okay, and then be a white guy and Chinese guy. That's going to be terrific." So they signed me to um to two picture deal, uh -huh. and they will get, and and asked me how much I want. I told him I wanted U.S. dollars. I want six, uh, six hundred dollars a week, okay. which is kind of cheap, and um, and and and, uh, uh, and and for the duration of the film. Okay. I said, how many weeks do you think? He said, well, maybe six weeks. I said, okay, that's how much it is. Okay. So I saved that money, and I stayed for the rest of the year. And learn filmmaking. So you were there for a year. I, I, was, I lived there for a year. Wow. Okay. And I, I I hung out with all the top filmmakers. Okay. And uh, and um, and everybody knew me because mm. they spent a lot of money on advertising. Okay. I, I still have a box full of uh, Filipino magazines with me in it. Okay. okay, okay. <laughs> so so anyway, so we shot and I saw uh, the movie. It's called Manila Gold. So and that was the action movie. It's supposed to be an action movie, okay. but but you know I said there's something wrong with that movie. It just don't look right to me. <laughs> it was, well, it's, it's badly done. It's on your different direction. <laughs> yeah, it's badly done. I, I mean, you know, I didn't know how to direct, but but I, I knew from my naked eye that it just didn't look right. And and it turned out, you know, uh, too many wide shots, not enough close-ups and stuff like that. Now I know. How to make movie, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, when the movie came out, it, it, it made a lot of money. It made good money? Yeah. Wow. But at the time... So it know, was released in the Philippines or it, it was here too? It made a lot of money in the Philippines, but here it didn't make that much money. Yeah. But it did okay. So you guys did it in English or uh, like a... a it was in English. Everything was not in English. English. Okay, okay. Yeah. And they used the best of uh, Filipino... Uh, Best of Filipino actors. Okay. Yeah, and they had a good uh, Filipino cast in it. Okay. okay. And it had Miss uh, 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 Miss Universe in it, uh, uh, Eva Reyes. Okay. At that time, you know, she was nineteen. Mm -hmm. She was nineteen seventy-two. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 Miss uh, Philippines. Mm -hmm. Miss Universe. Okay. So anyway, that's uh, that was my uh, film career, and after that, I got back here. Uh huh. And uh, and there was all kinds of newspaper articles about me mm -hmm. filming in the Philippines, mm -hmm. and and I went back to my church, and uh, and uh, resumed my ministry. So and, that know, was the beginning of the journey in film industry. For yeah. You, okay. In 1974. And now, when you came back from Philippines to here, because yeah. we have a short time now, how many uh, 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 film you did in Hollywood? Just uh, well, uh, okay, in the I brief, did, uh, you can tell. You know. <clears throat> I did. Um, I did seven overseas, I think, mm -hmm. and then I did uh, about twenty here. Okay. Yeah, and 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 uh, and the big um, uh, maker was uh, Kill Point, Low Blow, uh, um, um, and, and a bunch of others. Everything that I did okay. made money. So let me tell to my audience, you know, the uh, the, the journey began uh, for Leo Fan, uh, 
in Philippines. He came back over here and did so many uh, feature film back then, right after Bruce died. He was the one of the superstar in Hollywood yeah. in the action film. And uh, his film, Low Point, Low, uh, um, which was the Low Point? Low Blow. Low, low Blow and Kill Point. Kill Point, yeah. Low, low Blow and Kill Point. That was the biggest uh, making money in Hollywood. Yeah. So this is something about Leo Fan. Now he's doing a movie called Fight of Fury 2 in high relation with Shani B. That is me. So please, a little bit talk about that movie so our audience can have an idea about uh, this movie. What are you doing in this movie? And what is your uh, key role for helping Shani B? It will be appreciated if you tell them. Yeah, well, well in this movie, uh, 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 Fight of Fury 2, uh, I, I am um, a mentor to his, uh, uh, to his son, and then I, I, I am uh, sharing uh, my fighting experience with, with Sonny's uh, character in the movie. So basically I'm a teacher showing him how to, how to handle uh, bad people, I mean uh, villains, and then showing the young man how to uh, 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 develop courage within himself. That the whole key to uh, skill is uh, your inner inner skills, mm -hmm. and 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 it's not about imitation, but it's about being yourself. Yourself. And that's the lesson I want to get to him, because when you get into a street fight or a fight in the ring, the whole key is, do you have anything inside of you? As the Bible says, the kingdom of God is within you. Exactly. I you're love not, that quote. It's not outside of you. Mm -hmm. See? So when you fight your own way, uh, you are the real deal. Exactly. That's right. Bruce Lee could Absolutely. not. Bruce Lee did not have a studio where he taught uh, mm -hmm. millions of people. Mm -hmm. He had the chance to. They mm -hmm. paid him millions to open up a bunch of JKT schools. Mm -hmm. He refused. He said the reason he did that because you cannot teach JKD uh, in groups. Mm -hmm. You have to do it individually because every individual has a different self, different gifts and graces. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, and this is true. The expression way of different for every individual. You know, you express your way, I express my and way. Exactly, you know. exactly. And now, uh, I would like to ask you the end question going to be, because in the in the fight of Fury two inhalation, you train me your weak condo, okay? Yeah. And uh, before I go to fight men or bad guys in the movie, I come to train you. I come to couple uh, go to couple other style of martial art train and become strong and go and fight against the bad guys. So I in this movie I came to train your style. Would you please tell about uh, weak condo? Uh, how did you develop and okay. when did you develop? Weekend was born in 1974, July the 20th, the day Bruce Lee died. July 20th. And, and uh, the, the um, production manager of Inner Dragon was Chaplin Chang. So I met him in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And so when I went to Hong Kong in 74, after the death of Bruce, a year after, to celebrate uh, his, uh, his birthday and, and death, uh, uh, Chaplin took me to all the different uh, movie studios in Hong Kong and introduced me. And of course, no, nobody was interested. Mm -hmm. And then so, so, so on, and then they, he had me an interview for the Martial Arts Magazine. Mm -hmm. So Chaplin on the way there, he said, Leo, what is the style of you? What is your style? You got so many different styles, boxing, toilet, fat, Wing Chun, and well, all that. On, huh? I said, you know, Chaplin, I never thought about it. Uh -huh. I said, I just, sometimes I just say I'm boxing. And I said, why don't we call it Wing Kendo? That's how we bond. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I said, well, what's Wing Kendo? He said, it means a way of the integrated fist. So everything you do. Uh, just just a minute. Can you tell what is, what is the meaning of weekendo to audience? Um, the, the meaning of weekendo is 
the way of integrated fish. So the main thing is integration. That that whatever you do, I don't care if it's 50 different things, your challenge is to see how you can make it into one approach. Okay. And, and, um, and for me, I do waking dough and I got one, one, two, that I can tell you what, what I'm gonna do to you, but you don't know when. I got 12 ways of doing it. A left hook. I have knocked out so many people with left hook. It ain't funny. <laughs> because, okay, now. Uh, and that's where Kendo. Mm -hmm. that, that's, this is the Kendo founder of Weekendo, Grandmaster Leo Fan, and, and he's a very good friend of mine. I'm very happy to have his friend uh, in this life. And uh, now, hope you enjoyed the, our interview with Leo Fan. And uh, this is the still pandemic going on. We are maintaining social distance, and we both vaccinated, right? Anyway. Yes, I got. But it. still, we we maintaining distance. I hope everybody you gonna maintain the distance and get over with this pandemic and have a normal life again. And see you again. Thank you very much, everybody watching our show. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>